Hello, I am Professor Tsutomu Takeuchi of the Keio University School of Medicine in Tokyo, and I was delighted to participate in this important trial of pepicitinib in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, recently published in Annals of the Rheumatic Diseases. I am going to talk you through the key points of the study and the implications of this data for clinical practice. Activation of the genus kinase, or JAK, pathway is a key event in the pathogenesis and progression of RA. This pathway is consequently a target for new therapies. Pefisitinib is a pan-JAK inhibitor recently approved in Japan as a once-a-day oral therapy for RA. RAJ4 was a pivotal phase three study in which we assessed the efficacy and safety of pefisitinib in combination with methotrexate compared with placebo. The study was carried out in Japanese patients with RA who had an inadequate response to methotrexate and evidence of bone erosion in at least one joint assessed using the Fandel height modified total sharp score MTSS and either positive for anti-CCP antibody or rheumatoid factor. Patients were randomly assigned to treatment with either 100 mg or 150 mg of pepicitinib or placebo in combination with their usual stable dose of methotrexate for 52 weeks. Patients receiving placebo who had an inadequate clinical response were switched at week 12 to either pefisitinib 100 or 150 mg and maintained at that dose until the end of the study. The remainder of patients in the placebo group were switched to pefisitinib at week 28 for the rest of the study. 518 patients were included in the full analysis and safety analysis sets. Mean MTSS scores, DAS28 scores, and CRP levels show that the study population consisted of patients who were not only unresponsive to prior methotrexate, but mostly had severe RA. Both of the primary endpoints of the study were met. That is, ACL20 response rate at week 12 and change from baseline in MTSS at week 28. ACL20 response rates at week 12 were significantly higher in both pefisitinib groups shown here in red compared with the placebo group shown in gray. From week 12 to 52, ACL20 response were maintained in both pefisitinib groups. In the patients who switched from placebo to pefisitinib, all responses improved and were maintained through to week 52. Pefisitinib treatment also slowed the rate of joint destruction. Changes from baseline in MTSS, joint space narrowing JSN score and erosion score at week 28 were significantly lower in the two pefisitinib groups than with placebo. With regard to adverse events, pefisitinib was generally well tolerated over the 52 weeks of the study. Most adverse events were mild or moderate, and the rate of drug-related serious adverse events was similar between placebo and pefisitinib groups. The instance of serious infections and herpes zoster-related disease was higher in the pefisitinib groups than in the placebo groups, but no dose dependency was observed. Additionally, no thromboembolytic events were reported during the study. So to summarize, both 100 and 150 mg doses of pefisitinib were clinically and structurally effective and well tolerated over 52 weeks with safety signals similar to those seen with other JAK inhibitors. Pefisitinib may therefore be a variable addition to the treatment options for RA 
particularly for patients who are unresponsive to conventional therapies. Thank you very much for your watching.